Hello everyone and welcome to Bevan's Builds and in today's video we're going to be changing brakes on a 2005 F-150. Now the first thing I want to talk about when changing brakes is how to jack a vehicle up. Now how I actually jacked it up was I put the floor jack underneath the lower control arm here which is located underneath the lower strut. But the second thing I want to point out is you never want to trust totally the floor jack because the floor jack is a hydraulic part and it can bleed out and it can drop on you. So the most important thing to realize is that you need to put a jack stand underneath the vehicle. And where the jack stand is located is it's actually lined up with the frame as you can see here. Now I already have this side pulled apart and I'm going to actually go through step by step on the other side on how you change things but I want to show you what the actual catastrophic failure was on this particular issue and why I'm having to change everything. The first thing I want to point out is if you notice this caliper, the, the cylinders have actually broken on it so I'm changing this out. But what caused all that problem was the mounting arm here and the reason I'm showing you that if I can flip it around and get a good picture of it anyway. If you have two arms or two pins here that your caliper actually mounts to. And as you see, the arm should be able to move back and forth and that allows your caliper to actually adjust to the width of your rotor. And this one, as you can see, is seized up, which caused a catastrophic failure and caused the wheel to lock up, as you can see by the skid mark on my driveway. Now, luckily, AutoZone carries the caliper with that bracket already with it which is this bracket here as you can see now the thing that I want to point out to you is when you're doing brakes though again this pin that slides in and out you should be using some type of lubricant every time you do your brakes because otherwise you'll get that froze up issue which is what happens if you don't do proper maintenance with this being a new unit this is already pre lubed so we're not going to be worrying about it though over here now, since I'm already starting on this side, I'm going to start discussing things you want to do during assembly. And one of the first things you're going to want to do is after you take your brand new rotor out of the back package, you're going to want to take some brake clean because there is an oily film that is on the metal here and the brake clean will get all the oily film off. But what I suggest doing is actually putting it on the car first and then spraying it off while it's on the car. Now that we have the rotor sitting up there, I already sprayed it, I'm going to spray it again. But the next thing we need to do is we got to take this arm off of the caliper. And how you do that is this bolt and this bolt. And I use a nice ratchet and they're metric, even though I know it's an American car. But the point in me showing you this is it's a 14 millimeter, at least on this truck. Now that I have that mounted, and again I just want to show you, it's just the two bolts here and here. And the bracket actually goes on the inside of the housing for when you're bolting it. We're going to now spray this off one more time. That way all the oil film is off it before we start putting on the brakes. Now the next thing we got to do though is we physically got to change this out. I'm going to go ahead and change the caliper out first as we have to do that to finish doing the brake change on this particular side. So again with that being discussed what it is you got to take this nut off which will remove this arm which when then we will come over here and we have to put it in the place of this. But there's a few things I want to point out. When doing brakes one of the first things you want to do is take the lid off of your reservoir. And the reason that you normally want to do that is because you have to compress your caliper. Now, now with that being said, because we are changing the caliper, I want to make sure that I point out that you leave the reservoir on. And the reason that you are leaving it on is you don't want to introduce air into the system. As we are going to have to bleed the system after we are done and we want to minimize the amount of air that gets into the brake line system. Now with changing the caliper, I want to discuss a few quick things. Here's the brake line that comes in. There's the bolt we're going to be taking off to put onto the new caliper. Now, the new caliper, <laughs> I thought I had it sitting here and I don't, so we're just gonna discuss it real quick. Here's your bleeder on the caliper, and again, this is where your brake line goes. Now, your new caliper comes with a bolt and two washers, and I wanna make sure that I'm clear on this. With the two washers, the first washer goes to the inside of that bracket, the second washer stays against the head, and you're gonna tighten it in until it's good and snug inside of the coupling or inside of the caliper, excuse me. Now as you can see, I got the brake line changed. 
I just have these on just to hold it into place while I was doing it. But the other thing I want to point out is now that you've changed it, there's brake fluid on everything, you want to spray it all down with brake clean again because brake fluid is very, very corrosive. And if you get any brake fluid on your car or on your paint, it will eat it right away. So make sure you spray everything down really good again with brake clean. And I'm just going to go ahead and record everything on this side because it's already nice and pretty clean and easy to see. So what it is, and as you can see, you put the pads on first before you put the caliper on. Now with the pads, each pad will actually, a set of pads should come with four of these, but you're going to use two per side on each side of the vehicle. This being the passenger side, I'm taking two of these, I'm popping the old ones off, pop the new one on on the top, pop the new one on on the bottom. And then as you can see here, you just kind of slide the brake in. And now that the brake is slid in, what we're gonna do is take some anti-squeak. I like to use this particular product here. It's made by CRC. It's called Disc Brake Quiet. And just to show you on the white, because it's easier to see, it sprays out this little red goo, so to speak. And what that does is that prevents any vibration from this metal surface to this metal surface because if you ever heard a car going down the road and you hear that little slight metal squeak when they press their brakes it's because they don't have any of the brake quiet on anyway i'm going to spray a little dab on either side and then we're going to put the caliper back into place the next step i want to discuss is these pins uh, i'm trying to pull this one back out so you can see what i'm talking about really closely you'll see there's a little hole at the top of each brake pad and what you do is you take that clip you compress it and then you slide it in to those holes on the top and the bottom. And there is a very important reason that you're putting these clips on. Those clips are what keep the brakes from being stuck against your rotor. And then as you can see on that clip that we put in here, there's a little tit right here on the end of it. And that little tit is what keeps those from popping all the way back out. And it gives you a nice quiet sound and it makes sure your brakes are fully released after a stop. Now it's really just as simple as sliding the caliper onto the support beat bracket here and over the rotor. And again, we're gonna spray these one more time with brake clean. And again, all it is is just one, two bolts. Now the next thing I wanna show you just as a, a safety check that you can see to make sure that you've done everything right. Now to know that you've done everything right, number one, it should freely spin. And number two, your rotor, or your caliper, I should say, should slide back and forth just like that. So now with all that being said and done, we know we replaced the caliper. So now we're gonna go ahead and bleed the brakes. Now this process of the job is actually a two part person or two person job. And this is what I mean by that. If you don't have an actual hydraulic pump anyway, you're gonna have one person start pumping the brakes like so until you say stop, stop. And now you see how he's holding it and pushing it while he's doing that. Every time they push and hold it like that, you're gonna take your wrench and you're just gonna loosen it a quarter turn and back. But the other thing I wanna point out is you wanna use a nice clear piece of tubing. And the reason I say that is because you are not completed with bleeding your brakes until you see a steady stream of liquid coming through here. If you see any air bubbles at all in here while you are bleeding the brakes you have to keep continuing because you want to get each every little bit of drop of air out of that brake line otherwise it is not going to work properly so again all you do is you take this you push it on there when he says when i say stop he pushes the plate and hold it and then i'm going to push this down watch the fluid come through here and then close it back and then tell him to pump it again and now on this side i'm going to sit and watch my son do it all now what he's using right now to break loose the lugs is what you call a breaker bar. And then I use an old motorcycle fork as extra leverage so it makes it extremely easy. Much easier than using a four-way. But I will suggest if you have a pneumatic air impact, which I do, and I'm trying to teach him how he can do it without one, I would recommend using the air impact. Now again, the first thing he's doing is we're jacking it up and we're jacking it up on the frame rail because actually that's the most safest place to do it. And once we get it jacked up, we will put the jack stand just right there on the frame rail as well. Now, as you can see this side, the rotor is pretty torqued up and he's taking off the first two bolts for the caliper. Trying not to rake his knuckles. <laughs> 
after we get both bolts out, which he just did. Now we're going to take a pry bar and stick it in here. Right there's the pry bar. Shit. Get it down there. inside of it. There you go. And just slowly pry it out. Goes the same thing on the bottom. You might help you out here honey you want to put her here <laughs> where's the flathead screwdriver oh, yeah. okay use that that's fine that's a small one but it should still work and before I totally forget to mention it when you're doing this because we're just changing the pads take the cap off the reservoir that way the fluid can easily travel back up Again, now as we did is we just slid that off and what I immediately do is I take it and roll it over and set it on the top. So now the next thing we gotta do is slide these out, which I'm gonna have to take a screwdriver and pry them out. Now after you get the rotor and the pads out of the way, you gotta remove the two bolts on the back to hold the bracket on because you cannot replace the rotor without removing that bracket. Okay, now just to show proper maintenance, you see how these are getting extremely tight. This one's actually good, but this one's really tight. We want to pull these off and what I'm using is just a really thin screwdriver. It gets the rubber boot off the needle. We slide it out and now I like to take and spray this clean. Anyway, after we get them all out, get them kind of cleaned up, I just like to put a little grease on them. I know they don't look like they're fully clean, but really they are. I just kind of smear it on it a little bit. And generally when you slide it in, push it all the way, it'll just reattach itself like you see there. And we do the same thing with this one. Just take it, lubricate it. Don't need a lot. You're going to spread it out with your finger all the way around it. Take it, slide it in the hole, and again, just push it all the way down and it pops back on. Now they both freely move. So we've done everything else. We have all this assembled. We're now ready to put the caliper on. But because this isn't a new caliper, we have to compress this back until it's flush into the surface before it'll slide over the new pads. And as you can see here, what I have is a C-clamp. And because this is a dual cylinder uh, caliper, I put a block of wood across it. And now as we tighten this in, it'll compress these cylinders. Now as you can see, it's fully compressed. We're going to take the C-clamp off and slide it into place. After compressing the caliper and you are done with assembly, make sure to put your reservoir cover back on. Put your tires back on, torque them back down. Now that we're putting the tire on, I just want to point something out because I'm going to go ahead and let him use the pneumatic tools now. Uh, when you're doing pneumatic tools, always make sure you start it first before you use the impact to drive them on. Go ahead. Now, after you're done, you want to come up here and you can see right here is the maximum fill. We're going to take the cap off. We're going to take some Prestone DOT3 brake fluid and we're going to top off the reservoir. So we want to make sure we have ample stopping power. And you don't want to go past that mark. Now the only thing left to do is take it for a test drive and enjoy a job well done. And that's it for today's video. So as always, if you get a chance, check out the links in the description of this video below. And we will see you next time on Bevan's Builds.